Hello and welcome back to Diecast Resurrection. In today's video, we're gonna check out this precision axle and chassis alignment jig that was sent in to me from RD Custom Speed Shop. I gotta say the instruction booklet here, you know, looks pretty professional. It's a smaller YouTube channel that does custom die casts that we're actually gonna be doing a challenge against in the upcoming week here. We're gonna be working on some 83 Chevys, I think at the end of next week sometime. He's doing the same model and the theme of the challenge is gonna be build a Chevy that you've had in your past. You know, so it's gonna be kinda cool. It's not really gonna be a competition. It's gonna be more of like a story time kind of video where we build a truck that we've had. So it should be pretty interesting. So he sent in this little jig as a kind of a bonus item for me. So check out RD Customs Speed Shop. I'll leave a link in the description. And today's video, we're gonna try this thing out. I was trying to think of what was the, what's gonna be the best way to present this to you guys. And I thought, you know, wouldn't it be funny if I did kind of like an infomercial kind of thing? Have you ever struggled with getting axles straight? Or find it hard to have even wheel well gaps on all sides of your die cast? Fucking piece is not worth Are you tired of the struggle? Well then you need RD Customs Precision Axle and Chassis Alignment Jig. Our precision axle and chassis alignment jig keeps the chassis aligned with the wheels. A must have for a serious die cast restorer and customizer. You know what, this is actually a really good idea. When you're doing axle tubes or if you gotta modify these slots in any way, it's really easy to run into trouble. So something like this is actually a really good idea and I do think I'll be able to use this on a regular basis. So I'd like to try this out today. So to make this a fair test, I'm gonna open up these, uh, these little slots where the axles go just to give them room to move around a little bit. So I'm gonna try out our little jig here and just see how well this is gonna work. Got a nice steady stand, put wheels in the front, wheels in the back, and then you take whatever elastic bands you would need. Uh, let's see here. We'll start with these red ones. I guess it'd be something like that, you know? Once you get it in there, it's a little bit tricky to, to get those elastics on there just because they're fairly beefy, but once she's in there, I mean, everything's real solid. So now that we're locked in place here, I'm guessing I can test fit my body. And so it's gonna show me exactly where my wheels are gonna be before I glue, so that's pretty cool. Let's see if we can get it to, uh, I'm gonna try and move some of these forward. The further back we go on the scale here, the harder it's gonna pull our rear axle against the back of the slot for easy gluing. And you can see the wheel is pretty much making contact with the back of the car now, so. One thing I would probably do is uh, get some thinner rubber bands. These are very high quality rubber bands, but they're also super beefy and super thick, and I don't know if we need as much tension as these are actually putting on those axles. So I toned down the rubber bands a little bit, and that seems to work a little bit better. So my smaller rubber bands are kind of filling the gap in between the wheel and the base where the other ones were kind of overlapping. So I think these smaller bands are actually gonna work a little bit better. So it's a pretty innovative idea, simple design, and uh, there's definitely a need for it, I would say. Not on every build, but definitely on some builds. I have struggled in the past. And being able to test fit with the body while it's in the jig is, uh, that's just, that's where it's at, man. You can put a little dabber of glue. I got some new accelerator here I wanted to try. This is aerosol free. These should be good to go now, so I'll unlock them. Get my rubber bands back. Get that perfect alignment every single time. Wow. So that worked pretty good. Using this long term, I think if I put a little bit of rubber up here, like some, uh, just just something that's gonna make this surface non-slip, it's gonna make it so that uh, the base can't move around as easily up here. So a little bit of rubber, I might modify mine to just kind of keep it gripped in one place. And other than that, man, you know, that worked out perfect. So big thank you for RD Custom Speed Shop for sending me this jig and a couple of the 83 Chevys here for our upcoming challenge build. We'll see this in a week or so. I think videos are gonna launch on the 18th. So we got a little bit of time to wait for that. 
But I'll be back in a day or so with another video. So until then, keep your stick on the ice and I'll see you guys in the next one.